on this episode of what's going on with shipping. It's only a matter of time, but pirates have attacked the supply chain. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano, the chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, Political Science here at Campbell University in beautiful Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, former merchant mariner and a instructor in courses in maritime history, maritime policy, and maritime security, which all come into play in this story because we've been doing this series now since March, almost a year, and we have avoided the P word. But today, pirates. We're dealing with pirates, but not the pirates you may think of. No, no Jack Sparrow, no Black Pearl. We're dealing more the Jesse James style. We're dealing with train pirates. So this story on Twitter was by uh, John Schreiber. He's a photojournalist for CBS2 out in Los Angeles. And this is a story that's been out there for a while. There's a, a stories back into the fall and even into the summer of last year about instances involving pilferage of containers on trains coming out of LA and Long Beach and out of the distribution centers and through what's called the Alameda Corridor. This is an area where trains travel through Los Angeles. And I'm gonna let John's video speak for itself right now. COVID rapid tests. So I want to pause this section here for a minute. So these are double stack containers, 53 foot containers. You can see it on the side there. But notice these containers are not labeled with shipping companies with Maersk and Hop Hog and Costco. These are containers where the ones that have been taken off the vessel, the 20 and 40 footers, the TEUs, FEUs, have been taken off, brought to a distribution center, unpacked, and then the material repacked into these 53 foot containers because 53 foot containers are the largest rail, uh, road containers you can use. Now you may be asking, wait a minute, Sal, why would you take stuff out of one container and put in another container? Well, coming from Asia or wherever these containers originally come from, the ocean containers, they'll be packed with goods coming from a manufacturing site. So for example, there may be a manufacturing site that makes my fine orange coffee mugs. Well, they're not going to individually pack each coffee mug for distribution or even put them together to go to a distribution retail store, Walmart, Dollar General, or something like that. They'll ship thousands of these over. Well, those thousands then have to be unpacked from the shipping container, the ocean shipping container, and then repacked into these distribution containers that are sent out. And we know that's the case because according to the video you saw there, you saw things in Amazon and UPS packages. These are containers that have been repacked. And if you look at this video here, you'll notice right there, that top container off the 53, and it's gonna be the top one because you probably can't open the doors all the way on the bottom. They pop open those locks, they cut them, get in there and grab what they can, throw the boxes out and then sift through them. That is what's going on. And this is going on in Southern California right now. You don't know about stuff like this out right. here. This now, is the United States Postal Service doesn't use the planes. They just use planes and cars. There's a UPS package that you see opened up. USPS item out here, yes. Hi, can I help you? You don't know about stuff like this. So those packages have been processed. They've got the labels on them. So they've already been out of the ocean shipping containers and now moved over to these containers. 
John was actually able to pull UPS tracking numbers off some of these packages as an REI package. And so he was able to see that this was going up to Bainbridge Island in Washington for distribution. And according to the UPS tracking number, it's on the way and delayed. Yeah, I think it's going to be delayed quite a bit before it shows up at Bainbridge Island, if it ever shows up at all. One of the other things John shows is how these trains stop here from time to time. They, they have to stop waiting for the railway to clear up. And you'll see this is line of trains sitting here. And if you look the entire distance here, it's just absolutely amazing. The amount of boxes that have been pulled out and open and just trash everywhere. Obviously this is a rail area. Rail areas tend to be in fairly low income areas. You can see right here, mobile home, uh, mobile homes and everything along the side here, people living in them. Uh, there's a lot of homeless living along these rail lines right here. And when these trains stop like this, they're, they're just open for attack. And that's what we see happening. And unfortunately, there's very little protection for these trains. John took his drone up over this area and photographed this. Uh, in his tweet for this post right here, he said this area had been cleaned up 30 days ago. Uh, it had been like this prior to this. They came in, cleaned it. So all of this has taken place within the last month. And it gives you an idea of just the scope and scale. And you can see those areas where people are living in the cars, in these homes and everything along the side here. It, it's just an incredible sight, it really is. <clears throat> so one of the questions you may ask is, where's the police? Well, that has to do with the fact that this is a gray zone when it comes to police enforcement. Local municipality polices, local city, uh, county polices don't tend to do this because this is interstate commerce. This is not an object that's going to stay within their community. It's just passing through. So they tend not to put a lot of effort into this. Interstate this is federal, but what federal entity is going to oversee it? What you see right here is a Union Pacific police officer, a police officer of the Union Pacific who's charged with monitoring this. But there is nowhere near enough police officers presence to monitor the volume of trains and the amount of cargo that's coming out of this area. And there's very little, as you see, the police can do to stop these attacks against these trains. I retweeted this story out and uh, I had a very funny comment about this is what we need to do to protect the trains is put some armed trains together, uh, maybe a little bit of overkill on, on the weaponry here, but that was one of the uh, solutions that came up with this. Why is this important for a show about ocean shipping is this, the Ocean Container was created by Malcolm McLean in 1956. He was a truck driver. And one of the things he realized was there's inefficiency in the moving of cargo. One of the issues was pilferage. People would take stuff. If I am shipping my beautiful orange cups all the way across from Asia to the United States, I would ship a hundred of those in a wooden container or a cardboard box. I'd be lucky to get 80 of them uh, if, if, if at all, because some of them would disappear. And you factored that into your shipping. You just had to take that loss, which means you had to ship extra and you had to raise the cost to cover that pilferage. Well, if this pilferage is going on, what we're seeing is massive losses. And understand, this is not a new story. This has been going on for this is a story that came out in November by the NBC affiliate in Southern California. And again, this is November, this is three, two months ago. And what we're seeing is much of the same. Thieves are suspected of pilfering products off trains in California, leaving thousands of boxes tossed off Union Pacific trains and left scattered on the tracks. It may sound like the train robberies of the Wild West, but it's happening today as the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach struggle to process idling ships, adding to the already snarled supply chain in our pandemic recovery. Our NBC Los Angeles crew caught on camera several container doors swung wide open. 
That section of the track bordered by homeless encampments on both sides. NBC LA capturing on video these two individuals along the tracks, one hopping on a slow moving train carrying what appears to be bolt cutters. Cargo thieves and organized cargo theft groups is that they will target commodities that they know that they can sell. So they're going to hone in on those commodities that are either high in demand or shortage and harder for people to get. That way they can get a better return on the sale of it when after they steal it. Back in August, officials found $100,000 worth of merchandise taken from a Union Pacific train in a homeless encampment in Pomona, California. The Pomona police telling NBC News that cargo trains are, quote, hit continually and almost weekly. Police saying the stolen items in August appeared to be new with packaging intact, including vehicle tires, small kitchen appliances and fixtures, major appliances, auto-related parts, clothing, shoes, cleaning supplies, baby-related items, and various household items. Union Pacific issuing a statement saying they're aware of the thefts and are working with local law enforcement. The stealing comes as the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach are clogged with 100 ships waiting to dock, a supply chain in crisis worldwide. So this has been going on since November, actually more than that, because in the story they talk about an August hit where this happens. Uh, the guys over at What the Truck on Freight Waves detailed this story with trains going across the Midwest with doors wide open. And so this is significant for us in the supply chain. You know, I mean, this is a shipping show. Why are you talking about trains, Sal, when we want to talk about ships? Well, if goods are being stole, stolen from trains and pilfered, that means we have to increase the amount of goods that's coming across to replace those that are lost. Also, you, the consumer, are going to be paying for that extra freight that's coming across. So that more cost, more time, and more delays are coming in, and that causes a bigger backlog in the ports and the need to ship more cargo. All of this has an impact, and that's why piracy, whether it's a float or ashore, is a vital issue when it comes to freight. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I finally brought piracy into it, but in a way I didn't think I would do. I was expecting the R side, but we didn't get that. Instead, we got the kind of the Jesse James side. Get what you get. So if you enjoyed today's video, please share. Please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come across. Leave a comment. And if you can, I appreciate it. I, if you can, support me through my Patreon page. That allows me to do these videos, put them out there, and stay up on all the subjects dealing with ocean shipping. Until our next video, this is Sal. Arr. Signing off.